Good morning and welcome to this fine institution. You there at the back, stop chewing chewing gum, pay attention, it's your own time you're wasting. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very seasonal Arkea Soup episode. Now, um, the reason why I'm dressed like this is because this is the time of year when I receive a flurry of questions with two main topics. Can you guess what those topics might be? And the first question, or the first topic that I, I receive questions along the lines of, is what should one be studying in preparation to go to university and get onto an archaeology degree course? Um, often people are entering, entering their A-levels, or their, their equivalent of A-levels, um, and they want to be prepared for what may lie ahead if they want to be an archaeologist. And I've actually already covered that question and questions like that in a previous video. I'll put a link to it in the video information. If you're watching via a, um, a clickable medium, i.e. a laptop or a, or a PC, all you need to do is click on my face. Yep, there you go. And that'll take you to that video. So I have already tackled that um, and I think the, inf the information and the advice in that video still stands. So do watch that. The second question that I receive um, is with regards to actually being at university and what to read. You know, you've arrived at university, um, you, you're overwhelmed perhaps by the summer reading list that you should have received from your course provider. Um, or maybe you just want to get a head start and you're going, what, what, should, what, should, what should I take an interest in? There's so much to look at, so much to do. And that's what I'm going to be tackling a little bit in this video. And um, I suppose my advice is very, very simple and it revolves around three key points. Uh, the first key point is follow the advice of your course administrators. That is to say you will be given at the beginning of your, your archaeology course some very good advice. This will include reading lists, it will include for example how to write essays, it will include um, hopefully some advice on how not to stress yourself out. Follow that advice. Um, do read the suggested reading but also read the books which are suggested by the suggested reading. For example, um, what many archaeologists call the Bible, um, the Renfrew and Barn um, archaeology sort of method and theory book, um, is a wonderful, wonderful textbook, but also in it every chapter is ended with uh, suggested further reading. So do follow up on some of this stuff. But my caveat with that is don't read too much. Don't send yourself do lally. <laughs> because if you do send yourself do lally with too much reading in your first year, you will burn out. And I have to say, I came very close to that. Um, I was so panicked, so freaked out at the prospect of being in university and needing to know all this stuff. I actually went to my uh, one of my tutors and said, I can't possibly learn all this stuff. The arche Have you seen the archaeology section in the library? There's too much to know. And um, quite rightly, my tutor said, um, chill, relax. Uh, I didn't quite take his advice, but he was he was on the right lines. And um, so what I would say is is read um, what what's suggested to you. Maybe do a bit of additional reading, but don't read it all. Don't hoover it all up because you're also going to need a little bit of your brain left over, especially in the first few weeks for just settling into university. So settle in as well. Yeah, make sure you, you're good to yourself. My second piece of advice is to follow. Um, those topics which interest you. So in particular, for example, if you're reading Remper and Barn or similar textbooks, for example, the one by Green uh, or any other suggested reading. Um, if something interests you, so for example, if it's uh, a certain type of Neolithic tomb, if it's a certain uh, tribe like the Hopi, if it's a certain um, method of excavation or, or say thermoluminescent dating, um, pursue it. Read a bit more about it. Follow what interests you because actually that will serve you really well in the second year. I'm talking about a standard university structure I suppose. In the second year but also in the third year when you're, when you're expected to come up with a, a, um, a dissertation or a thesis idea. Uh, this you'll already know roughly what you want to what you want to do you'll know what you're interested in and therefore what you can dedicate essentially a year or more of your life to thinking about and reading about and writing about. Uh, now obviously we're thinking a few years ahead here but starting now is a great place to start. Just take let your interests take you where they will um, because very soon you're going to run out of, of spare 
time, or at least you should do if you're working hard, or if, and especially if you've got lots of essays due in. Um, so take this time to just see what interests you, get a, get a bit of a, a sense of what's, what's, what's good in archaeology and what you think you could pursue uh, in the coming years. Um, for me, it was the Mesolithic. I was fascinated, and I still am fascinated by the Mesolithic in, for example, northern England and around the North Sea into Denmark. It's just, uh, well, and to a certain extent further north, it's just, it's just a fascinating topic for me. Um, so see what interests you and pursue those casually. Again, don't doggedly pursue them in the first few days of university, otherwise you'll burn yourself out. Um, and my, <clears throat> my third piece of advice is, I suppose reiterating all the other bits of advice that I've given, and that is don't work too hard in the first year. Now by that I'm not advocating just passing. You know, for example, on lots of university courses in the first year, all you need to do is get a basic pass. Uh, for example, at my university, that was maybe 40%. And now when I say basic pass, it, that's a matter of, you know, your uh, what, what would it, uh, Chris Rock would call it a GED, a good enough degree, you know, it, it's sort of like a really, really basic pass. I'm not, I'm not advocating doing that because often those marks do count and can be referred to in later years, especially say if you to fall seriously ill, say in your third year. Um, so definitely aim for as, you know, for as good a mark as you want to and as you can get. But don't treat it as though it's your final year, because you will have a final year, and if you've treated your first year like it's your final year, again, you'll come very close to stressing yourself out and maybe having some sort of nervous breakdown, especially if you're working hard and you're at a slightly, um, well, free countable personality. So, <laughs> so don't do what I do essentially, uh, or what I did. Um, in my first year I worked incredibly hard, I treated it like it was like, like it was finals, got a very good mark, won an award from the university, and then in my third year kind of didn't work for six months. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just because I didn't, I didn't pace myself. So what I would say is pace yourself. Be very, very um, well, be very careful, be very gentle with yourself, but also, of course, be rigorous. So, uh, all in all, all together, basically what I'm saying is follow what you enjoy doing, try and explore, the, uh, take this time, this opportunity to explore archaeology, and then as you're exploring and following what you enjoy doing, along with doing the modules that you have to do, of course, um, don't just don't work yourself too hard, otherwise you'll burn out or you'll have a, a great big incident and you will regret it um, in some way. Now I have to say for my part, I did very well at university. I, I graduated with a, a very good mark, um, very good indeed, but um, <laughs> I'm not here to sort of to go, oh, aren't I amazing? Uh, it's more just to say that even if you do have a slight free count, you can still do very well. But, uh, but pace yourself, relax and pace yourself. And most of all, folks, most of all, enjoy this time. Um, it doesn't feel like it. At times you think, I can't believe I'm paying for this stress. I can't believe I'm actually, I'm, actually, I'm actually paying to stress myself out this much. At the times it will feel like that. But also as well, it's a wonderful time. You'll meet friends that you'll, that you'll keep for the rest of your life. You'll, you'll drink things that you've never drunk before and may never drink again. You'll, um, you'll get an opportunity to explore the world, both in terms of books, but also physically. Oh, many departments offer, for example, digging experiences abroad. Um, and you'll also get a chance just to explore yourself. And that's really what university should be about. It's about improving yourself, um, not just working hard, freaking out, and, um, uh, well, and frankly getting drunk. It's, 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 it's a combination of all those things. And, um, and hopefully you'll have a great time. So hopefully this has kind of been useful. Um, I, I'm not going to recommend specific texts because frankly every course will be different and everyone actually frankly will respond differently to different texts. I happen to, to love Renfro and Barn. Other people, their personalities or their learning styles may well find other textbooks more useful. But do carefully pay attention to what's said to you in the first few weeks and, um, and check out the recommended reading because there'll be some great recommendations on there. Anyway, I can hear Indy the dog um, scratching away in the background. I reckon he needs a walk, so I'll leave it there. As ever, until next time, do take care, do enjoy your first few weeks at university, and uh, yeah, congratulations on getting in. Until next time, bye-bye.